your host, Charlie McGrath, along with Eric of the Lovely Family, on this Tuesday, the 31st of July, 2012. Uh, I'm back, and I want to thank everybody who sent me uh, uh, concern messages when you found out I was sick last night. Um, I'm okay. I just had a, a uh, well, technically exercise-induced asthma uh, attack and was not able to go on. I, I waited up until... Uh, the last few minutes before the program, before I contacted Michael Snyder and uh, asked him to join me tonight. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have Eric Lovely for hour number one. We're going to have Michael Snyder for hour number two. And there's going to be a lot of uh, informative information coming out tonight. So hopefully, if you're not in the chat room, you can uh, get in there and join the guys, especially in this first hour, because uh, Eric Lovely has written um, an article and unfortunately, because uh, uh, we still have a, our webmaster uh, driving across this, the country back to Alabama, um, it is not posted yet, but we will have it posted soon. But that is not going to prevent us uh, from digging into this a little bit because it's very, very relevant. It's very, very relevant to our times, and it's very relevant to what the headline, the I, I don't like saying headlines of the day anymore, Eric. It's, mer it's very relevant to what the agenda that is unfolding before our very eyes is playing out right now, right now. I mean, you know, is it ironic that we have a massacre in Colorado and we have eyewitnesses, multiple eyewitnesses saying, yeah, there's multiple people involved. There's some, somebody got on the phone, went to the door, left it blocked. Then we have smoke canisters coming in, tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. A guy jacked up because he just shot 13, 14, or excuse me, shot, what, 80, 90 people. Then he goes out in this uh, battle gear that is uh, all uh, the battlefields uh, de spreading democracy, air quotes, around the world, and sits down in the parking lot so the police can come and arrest him, and the feds are there within uh, a millisecond, it seems like. Isn't it ironic? I mean, it, this is so ironic. Uh, it, it even gets more ironic if we go a few more days past the event and we find out that his dad is the chief, uh, one of the lead scientists for FICO. And for those of you who don't know FICO, well, uh, you know, check your pulse because everybody knows what FICO is. This is how we determine the worth of humanity in the United States of America. This is getting more bizarre by the day, what's happening there. And I know, what, Eric, I'm probably not even covering everything uh, that has to do with that, but we, but we, I, I want to move on. We have the Colorado massacre that is surrounded in not only tragedy, but mystery. And the headlines that I pulled this morning for WideAwakeNews.com paint a whole different uh, portrait of what we are doing, what's being done in our name. See, we have... We have the elite telling us that it is time to get guns under control. It's time to really step up and do something. It's time that we, you know, we, we limit the, uh, the veracity of, and the ferocity of the weapons that the American people can have. The old debate of the Second Amendment is back in full force. How timely. How topical. Right when we have a, uh, UN small arms ban treaty, uh, that allegedly failed, but it hasn't failed. Don't be fooled by that for a second. It's just been put on the back burner for a few days. We have a, a, a small arms treaty in the UN that can sp limit your ability to exercise your Second Amendment uh, because of the want of the United Nations. At the same exact time, we have Leon Panetta, U.S. Defense Secretary of the United States of America, telling Assad, seriously, this... This man represents you. If you're listening to me right now and you happen to be a, uh, an American and you're listening to this program, understand these words I read, they're not just some celebrity pop culture icon, right, that can go out and uh, act the fool and then get on television and say something ridiculous and you, cannot, uh, you can dismiss it as ignorance. This person represents you, the American person, the American uh, spirit, the American ideal, the American ideology, the American policy, when he goes out and says, Assad, if you want to be able to protect yourself and your family, you better get the hell out now. We have our defense secretary issue, uh, another government official issuing threats against a sovereign nation 
that I don't want to go to war with. I don't want to butcher people. I don't want this done on my behalf. And I would have to think, especially over the, pe the people I've talked to over the last several years, the people I've talked to on this program, the, 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 the poll data that shows the American people do not want this butcher uh, to... The bill that is being paid for the spreading of democracy, alleged democracy, we don't want to pay this butcher bill anymore. We don't want this. We don't want this being done in our name. Yet we have Leon Panetta, the head of the Secretary of Defense, the Secretary of Defense, coming out, threatening Assad. Get the hell out! Or your family won't be safe. Can you imagine saying that to any human being that you know? Get the hell out! Or we're going to butcher your family. And we're going to post it on YouTube. Get the hell out of your country. You've got to be kidding me. This is being done in our name. This is on the back of Hillary Clinton, one threat after another, supporting terrorism now in order to achieve the agenda of deposing Assad. Get the hell out! Or your family is going to be murdered. And we're going to put it all over YouTube. This is insanity, and this is being done in our name. Eric Lovely, welcome to the program. Well, you know, Charlie, that, that, that is really something that, uh, you know, you see, I've said things that has angered people about their parents and their grandparents being guilty of the, of the position that we're in and so on. But this is you. This is you, the listening public. If we allow this to happen, if we continue to sit around allowing these individuals to do what they're doing, it means that you're guilty. It means that you are allowing murder. In your name, you, so, I mean, I would say you need to be doing something, something out there, because you have these crazy whack job nutcases running around the world. Basically, I mean, the guy issued an open death threat, not just for a president, you know, his whole entire family. We're going to whack you, we're going to whack your whole family, and uh, so the best thing you can do is just run away and hide. And that, that's clearly what he said. Beyond the shadow of the doubt, you, you cannot mince words. But... You know, at the same time, as we start talking about uh, what it is we're going to talk about today, about guns and so forth, you know, you have so many more stories that, that people really need to be paying attention to. You need you, you need to look at the Russians, the Germans, the Syrians, and uh, uh, I forget the, the Middle Eastern nation, uh, I think it's Pakistan, and, and their intelligence agencies all coming out now, standing together, yep. all saying that... Every one of the murderous, heinous, disgusting, civilian slaughtering acts taking place in Syria are done by the insurgents and the new Al-Qaeda army presence, which is backed by your money. You are the ones that are funding murder. You're murdering citizens to topple this supposed dictator. Uh, the, 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 the insanity of what's going on in, in front of people's faces, and you know, I'm, I'm talking to everybody, not only in the chat room, but everybody over at Rents Radio, and everybody over at Oracle Broadcasting, I mean, you really, 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 I don't see how much, uh, how many times I can say that, need to sit up and take notice. And w with these individuals that are, what, what happened on in the, uh, and now as we'll go ahead and tell you, a gun freeze zone in Aurora, okay, it is one of the small portions, it's in the Denver area, it falls into the Denver guys, uh, a gun freeze zone, it is one of the only places in Colorado where you're not allowed to publicly bear arms, okay, it's, a, it's, it's where they've overturned the open carry policy of the state law within Colorado. So, I mean, just the insanity of who this person's father is and how they're tangled up in this. And we can go on to talk about how they were seeing a psychiatrist in Texas, and that, that Texas psychiatrist is actually a member of the United States Air Force, one of their top brass positions dealing with psychotropic uh, personalities, psychotropic drugs, and behavioral analysis, who is also the head of a training session for disaster preparedness who basically orchestrated a training session that was identical to what his patient carried out. Okay? Yeah. I'm tired of people telling me that, that you know, this whole idea of conspiracy and whatnot is just insanity. I'm tired of hearing even people on our side talking about, oh, there's no conspiracy. They're just a bunch of bad people doing it. This is yeah, I mean, you know, sure, there's bad people, right? There's bad people in every group. It doesn't matter. But everything you just said there, this whole Colorado thing, and Eric, I didn't even, you know, every, all the uh, the shock alternative media was covering this hot and heavy. 
But man, when you look at the reality of it, when you look at the reality of it, there is no, there is no explanation other than uh, this is set. This is set from the word go. You can't, you cannot have. You know, as Woody O'Brien came on here and said, this, this, the statistical possibility of having this exercise happening within, you know, 15, 20 miles away that covers the exact same thing. Let me ask you this, America. In, in all the hype, in all the hyperbole, in all the fear, in all the baiting that we've had over terrorism in the last a decade, when was the last time you heard that scenario? You heard everything. Everything from they're going to go after chemical plants, they're going to go after nuke plants, they're going to go into schools, they're going to burn down national forests, they're going to do anything and everything. But did anybody ever hear one time? In fact, I had chemical in, in little bitty Helena, Montana, I had a chemical drill happening right in front of my house. I posted that on YouTube. But did anybody ever hear this scenario? We're going to, go, we're going to prepare and be ready for an eventuality, which is going to be a lunatic walks into a theater full of people and starts shooting the joint up uh, using automatic weapons and bombs. No, you didn't. But on that day, on that very day, 15 miles away, we had preparedness activity going on for just that event. Inconceivable that this is a coincidence. That <laughs> You know, Charlie, it, it really is inconceivable. And, and you know, here's here, here's something else. Here, here's something that is so blatant. You know, I've told people forever that the Revolutionary War was about taking not only the king, but the British common law and casting it out of our nation. That's what it really was about. And people don't, they, they don't really grasp that because they have no no grasp on history. So now you have a Supreme Court justice, okay, uh, Justice Scalia who comes out and tells you, in colonial times, he's very particular about how he, he words his, his phrase. Great point. That, it, that in colonial times, there was arms restrictions. Okay, well, here's a newsflash for you. This is a British royal court official. He's a member of the bar, and he's using the British common law of the day that we threw out of this country to try and tell you now that there is legal precedence to circumvent the Constitution. It is blatant in your face. I know people hate it that I get to be right. But once again, I told you that up until Abraham Lincoln was here, the British common law, they loathed. They went to the individual right of, of a lone man or woman, but basically the man at the time was the sovereign on his own land and property, and they cast aside and d distinctly created their independence from British law, British courts. Okay, And now you have a Supreme Court justice that's going to attempt to use British common law that forced us to boot them out of this nation in the first place, he's going to use that and claim that there is legal precedence to take away your guns. Yeah. It's insanity. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. U.S. Supreme Court uh, uh, Justice Anthony Scalia outraged conservatives with his, with his remarks on gun control on the Second Amendment this morning uh, in his interview with uh, Chris Wallace, who actually I kind of like, by the way, is Chris Wallace. Scalia stated that the court may uh, issue gun control ruling in the future due to precedent uh, indicating that within the context of the 18th century, uh, the framers of the Constitution allowed for local restriction on gun guns and bans on certain types of weapons. Conservative immediately cried foul. And now, see, just the, the, the mere notion. Now, type in, I mean, anybody who wants to see the results of what happened in Aurora, you want to see the outcome, type in gun control in, in a... Uh, in a query on the uh, on the uh, the interwebs, I don't want to <laughs> say any engines. Um, type it in and see what happens. You get page after page of the red team, blue team, red team, blue team. This uh, side says this, this side says that, and all the while, all the while, we have this distraction going on at the gun control debate, and we have the UN voting on a small arms treaty, and we have the uh, uh, diversion of the U.S. Olympics. And when this is all going on. All this drama, all this uh, po posturing and posing and uh, setting up for uh, one of the great uh, uh, debates that's coming in this silly season, this election season, and guarantee you this, this will be 
in these debates. This will be all over the media. This will be what uh, a big part, part of this country will be focused on, is what happened in Aurora and how can we make it better. Then they want to focus on, well, how much did Obama, or, uh, Obama or Romney, how much did Romney have parked off short? How much money did Obama get from this uh, uh, group or that group? How left uh, is Obama? How right is uh, Romney? Look, he went to Israel. Look, he went to Poland. All this garbage is going on, distracting the American voter. This is why this, this is why when uh, the youth are uh, polled, the majority of them no longer believe that voting has any effect whatsoever, and they're turned off by it. Well, good for them. At least they're uh, somewhat awake. Their voting has no effect. It doesn't have an effect. It's stolen. It doesn't matter who you vote for. You go up to that booth uh, in November and you pull a lever, you're pulling it for the exact same person because what's really happening, what isn't uh, being uh, sold, showed, and told to the American people is the crimes that are happening in our name while we're focused on garbage. You know, I, I can't really say it better than myself. I mean, or be, be, better than that. It, it just, to me, it, it's really ridiculous. And, you know, I, I think it's funny how you know, a lot of people cast you whatever aspersions that they want upon me, but, you know, 10 minutes with, with Mr. Scalia in a public debate, and it would simply make him look stupid. We could look at several documentation. We can look at the original Constitution, the Second Amendment. We can fast forward until when they, the, the American populace realized what a disastrous mistake Abraham Lincoln was and what a disastrous mistake the, the Civil War was when, when they sided with Abraham Lincoln and so forth. Not the lie that you're the crap that you're fed now and told is the truth, but the actual disastrous uh, things as it came to light, what Abraham Lincoln did and how he basically was the most unconstitutional uh, president in the entire history of the nation. That's right, worse than Bush, worse than Obama, all of them. You can go all the way back to that point. You can fast forward uh, from the late 1800s where they instilled posse comitatus and read it. Read it for yourself. You see, when you get that pocket constitution, you don't understand uh, that, that, that there are basically there are lots of things that are omitted from this piece of paper. Now, when you ratify something, when something actually goes through the ratification process, what it means to be ratified means that on that day, it is as the same as the forefathers wrote it in the document on the day it was created. Posse comitatus is part of the Constitution. There is no way to separate it from the Constitution. You would actually have to have a ratification of the people of the many states to remove posse comitatus from the Constitution. So when you say the Constitution, this is an argument I have with people all the time and they don't seem to want to get it. You need to include these documents. These documents should be part of your Constitution. If you do not have them and know them, know that they are part of the Constitution, then you're completely lost. And you can look at Posse Comitatus and see where it clearly states and tells you that you must be armed as a soldier. You must have weapon. You must have rifle, shot, sidearm, and a sword. You can fast forward from that into the uh, anti-personal uh, militia acts that happened in the late 1890s. You can fast forward past that until 1902 where you look at the Dick Act and, uh, uh, you know, most people think that's funny, but it's the uh, Military Efficiency Act. It, it, it's uh, 11654 uh, was the actual H.R. 11654 was the bill. Now, in that, it goes on further to clearly break down and describe for the American populace in 1902 what the militia was and what it meant and the three different functions and parts to the militia. It also included in there that you can buy any weapon that you so choose of any kind that makes you and your community fully capable of waging war against anyone who challenges your liberty. Waging war. It says war right in the documentation. Then you can fast forward on into 1917 and you can look at the whole upheaval based on the Dick Act about sending troops overseas to fight in World War II, basically drafting them that the President and the Congress has no power to draft the militia in any function, that means the National Guard or the unorganized militia, which is you and me, they cannot draft you according to the law and force you to fight in other nations. They also cannot hinder your ability to buy weapons of war. That's what it says. Weapons of war. It doesn't say skeet shooting rifles. It doesn't say any crap about deer hunting rifles, any crap about bear traps, or any of that stuff. It says weapons of war. 
Okay? This is what people do not understand, they do not grasp. There are clear documentations that tells you your right to bear arms to wage war is out of the reach of Congress and the President. Period. End of story. It also states that it is out of the reach of the judicial branch. Why? Because it clearly stated that you are the sovereign, not the government. Commercial break. <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to break that down a little bit uh, after the break, if you don't mind, Eric. I, I, you covered a lot of things there, uh, but but let's get a little bit more uh, into that article and what you were talking about uh, about the Second Amendment and you know, in comparing it to what it's being sold as right now. We're going to be back with uh, more Eric Lovely, more Charlie McGrath, more Wide Awake News Radio, and more chat room in five and a half minutes. Hang tight, guys. We'll see you in a few. Wide Awake News Radio. I'm Charlie McGrath, your host, Eric of the Lovely Family. He's joining me. He's my he's my co-host. He's my uh, he's riding shotgun every Tuesday, every Thursday, first hour, five p.m. West, eight p.m. East, and we are talking uh, gun control. I mean, it certainly has been thrust uh, into the forefront. Eric, you wrote an article that we're going to get uh, posted up here, but but let's get into it a little bit. I mean, you you covered it uh, some of the some of the highlights of it in the first half, but let, let's break it down a bit. Well, I mean, you know, it really depends on where you want to start. I think that the big one, when the debate was, when you actually had people around who who were living the history, who physically were alive during the Revolutionary War, and they were alive being taught still from a family-oriented situation where their parents was actually giving them the information and teaching them what was going on in their recent history, such as the Constitution and so forth, because it had happened in just those the last hundred years, roughly, and they were really discussing it, and the issue of gun control through lawyers and legislation continued to come forward, you had a group, or organized a group of people who, they were the original Posse Comitatus Committee, and the Posse Comitatus Committee set forth a, um, I can't remember, I think his first name was was uh, Joseph, Joseph Dix, but I'm, I'm not completely positive on his first name. That's why they called it the Dick Act. He, he was the, the gentleman who stepped forward as the original proponent and, and penner uh, of this particular document. And basically what they came up with is they broke the militia down that was stated in, in, in the Constitution because lawmakers or lawyers at the time were attempting to pick apart the militia idea, and they were attempting to pick apart the the militia commitment, which is what posse comitatus translates into. Uh, that, that's what it means, militia commitment. That they were trying to pick apart your right to buy specific type of arms, calibers, grades, and so forth, just like you're going through now. And the Dick Act came forward and was unanimously ratified. And it clearly, basically, it clearly stated that the militia breaks down into three groups. That one, they actually gave way to the Constitutional Standing Army. Now, what that means is, is that individuals within the Constitution can create an army that can stand for two years under the direct command of the Commander-in-Chief. And that that army would be created from volunteers. And then, then the Commander-in-Chief office would then be granted to the President. You see, just because you're the President, you aren't the Commander-in-Chief. It has to be a declaration of war preceding that for a standing army to exist. The only thing that can exist is a navy, and I would argue now an air force, as some people did back in those times. Now, this particular army was the standing army portion of the Dick Act. The second portion of it clearly stated that the countries known as states had their independent right to defend themselves and have their own organized militia. They then forth, hence called it the National Guard. It also clearly states in Section B and Section D, and I, uh, and I, I think it's D, D3 as well inside that act, where it clearly states that the National Guard reports only to the governor and the state houses of legislation. It does not report to the president. It also clearly stated that the president has no authority to call up the National Guard to go outside of the borders of the nation to conduct warfare. So by doing so, you've committed treason by calling up the National Guard services and sending them overseas to fight in foreign wars. 
So all of this was addressed. And then it clearly, in subsection uh, C, where you actually look where it, it, it delineated and told you what the non-regulated militia was, which all these things were restated from the original Posse Comitatus Act of 1878, if I remember correctly, because they realized in 1878 what had horribly gone wrong in 1871 and in 1860s with Abraham Lincoln. And what it stated was is that the non-regulated militia is every able-bodied man from the ages of 18 to 45, and they had the personal right as well as the Second Amendment right, which is interesting when you look at that terminology. They separated the Second Amendment right from your own personal right to bear arms of warfare, that you could purchase as many weapons of any kind or quality that your wallet would allow to wage war on anyone or any institution that would attempt to rob you of your liberty. Now, these are pieces of history that no one seems to want to discuss, and no one even no one even knows they exist, really. You know, if you go up to somebody and say, you can say either one. I mean, if you say, hey, do you know what the Dick Act is? It, you're probably going to get some chuckles because it's, you know, kind of a provocative, so, which is the reason why they changed it and it, the name of it became the Militia Efficiency Act or, you know, the Militia, Militia Efficiency Legislation. And when you actually start to ask questions about this, no one knows that these things exist. And this is the reason why I say that your education system, you know, people talk about quality teachers and so on and so forth in the education system. Well, the road to hell is built, is built on, you know, the path is built on good intentions. Because even though they intend to do... Pardon me, Eric Lovely. I do believe the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Okay, <laughs> thanks for the correction. I just, I just can't, I can't not talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I understand. And, and, and when you look at these, these particular pieces of legislation, why are they never talked about? Why does people like Justice Scalia and these people never enter this into the argument? Well, you know, school teachers with their good intentions and so forth, you, they're omitted from your education system. Why? Because they aren't something they want you to know. They don't want you have to, for you no. to have a brand of intelligence or grounds of intelligence to fight from. So how is this played out? How is this played out? Well, let me read you this headline, Eric. Frank Lautenberg refuses to pull gun control amendment from cyber security bill. A lot of people don't know the Senate is voting, uh, debating this week on the floor a new cyber security bill. And uh, Senator uh, uh, Frank Lautenberg from New Jersey has uh, <coughs> attached an amendment to it that would limit uh, a, a gun control measure that would limit the uh, amount of ammunition a magazine can hold. Can hold. And in fact, you know, uh, we have Joe Lieberman basically calling him out to drop this because he's so he's so dripping at the fangs to get cybersecurity legislation passed that he doesn't want anything to hold it up. But Lautenberg quotes a longtime gun control advocate. He stepped up his call for action in the wake of a war shooting massacre this month that left twelve dead and dozens more uh wounded. His amendment this is all this is all crammed into one paragraph. His amendment to the cybersecurity bill mirrors a bill he introduced in January of 2011, just after the Tucson shooting that claimed six lives and nearly took the life of former uh, uh, Representative Gabrielle Gifford. In both cases, the shooter used high-capacity ammunition clips. This, this is blatantly obvious what the agenda is. We're going to. It, it, there's no difference between this tactic that has been tried for a long time. You know, all the way back to Reagan, we're talking about we have to have this uh, tougher gun control. But it's no different. The, the tactics are no different. But what I think is different is, Eric, we have a, a populace now in this country, on this planet, that has been inundated with fear tactics. And it's worked. We're killing people all over this planet. And we're selling it as, like, it's a good thing. We're doing it because we're protecting ourselves from the bad guys. Well... How big of a stretch is it now for all these same tactics that have failed over the years, all these same uh, legislators that have been in power for, for as long as Assad, as long as Gaddafi was, who are now going to be able to slip this kind of legislation into bills such as Cybersecurity uh, Act that is now on the floor of the Senate. This, this is 
look, look back over the last four years. We've seen sausage making, as they call it, in Washington, D.C. Leave this country behind. Leave this republic behind and take us to a whole new place. And I'm not talking just uh, the attempt to uh, limit the capacity of ammunition in magazines. I'm talking on every single front. It isn't even news hardly anymore when uh, pieces of uh, legislation like this are written where your, your freedom is being written out of the Constitution and your ability to protect yourself from tyrannical forces of government are being written out of the, the Constitution. We don't even bat an eye in this country anymore. We talk about what's going on with the Olympics. We talk about mitt and red and blue and garbage. This will pass, Eric. This is how this uh, legislation is going to come to bear. This, uh, along with a, a redo of the UN Small Arms Treaty. There's not a more important time, literally, Eric, am I exaggerating when I say in the history of this country, to have the ability to protect yourself from tyrannical government than right now. No, absolutely not. I mean, I, I'm here to tell you that right now you you need you need every bit of that Second Amendment. You need every bit of that posse comitatus right now. And you know, I will actually, you know, Amos in the chat room. He, he definitely, you know, when I say that there and people have no idea, he is correct. There are people that really have no idea because they don't care to look past the end of their nose, their iPod, their their big jigglies on TV, whatever excites them. But what it really boils down to is most people do know. Most people are just cowards. And, and it's unfortunately, the, the, you know, it's unfortunate that I have to say that, but it's the truth. They have, you know, the, it goes all the way back to something one of our, our wise forefathers said. When the people fear the government, liberty basically dwindles and dies. When the government fears the people, liberty flourishes. So what you see right now is a populace basically scared out of their mind and what they need to continue into this, uh, this, this, I don't even know what to call it anymore, this disgusting apparatus called the government. You, you basically, they continue to stoke the fire of fear. People are so afraid. They're scared to walk down the street. I mean, think about it. Even, even without firearms, without guns, how many people are afraid to even say hello? To the fellow members of their of their society on the street, how many people now are afraid and find that you see all these people talk about? Well, looking someone in the eye, it, it's just kind of aggressive. It's yeah, it's aggressive, but it means that you have backbone. It means that you aren't hiding from anything. That you're not a coward. That you're going to look them in the eye and you're going to speak the way you feel. You're going to carry your desires and your thoughts and your freedom right out in the open. We, we can't even look people in the eye walking down the street. And if you, if you look, if you look at the community like mine that I live in, now see, I carry a firearm 24-7. I carry a free Springfield XD at a minimum all the time. It is, it is never, it is never really even an arm's length away from me at all times, 24-7, even when I sleep, whether, whether people think that's crazy or not. And it is one of these high capacity ammunition devices, okay? Like it, it holds 13 rounds, and basically, when people look at me, you see people will take a instantaneous step back. Like somehow, the gun means that I'm a bad person. That, that they, they cower away from it. They, they cower away from interacting with me. On that, on, on this simple basis of what the school has done to them. What they have been taught to fear that they are somehow weak and, and, and incapable of defending themselves, that they are incapable of having their own ideas. But in no, uh, no other time, the, in my memory, Eric, and, and uh, being somewhat of a student of history, no other time can I imagine the, the ability to, to accomplish this agenda. And, and somebody uh, agreed with me in chat that, you know, we've been so immersed in, in fear and we've been so immersed in just going along with uh, with whatever the program is presented to us, they're going to do this. They're going to do this, period. And you, you couple this with stories, uh, what do we got here? Uh, DHS prepares for civil unrest as Obama poised to destroy, destroy uh, Second Amendment. U.S. Army, Army purchases a riot gear as fear over civil unrest grows. I mean, you know, this isn't conspiracy stuff, man. This is happening real time right now. And you know, by if you look at their actions, okay, if you look at the government's actions and what it, what they're doing, they're afraid. 
you can talk about how the military's got all these big toys, how they're, you know, I got, I got bombs, I got planes, I got drones. These people are afraid because they know that the people that operate this equipment have to sleep somewhere and have to sleep sometime. They're afraid of an armed populace. They're afraid of people who are, who basically just don't care anymore, who aren't cowards. They're, they're afraid of us. They're afraid of people who are willing to put it all on the line for their own freedom. That's what they're afraid of. They, they sit and they smoke cigars and drink their cognac in their big tall buildings and laugh at people walking around with wooden sticks of paper on the end of it. That, you know, you're not, you're not accomplishing anything. And it was an age old, age old wise man named Thomas Jefferson that said you can get a lot further with a gun and a smile than just a smile. And that is the reality. There, there is no one that is responsible for defending your freedom other than you. That's where it starts. And you have, I, I mean, I carry my firearm everywhere I go to set a precedent, to let people know. And I'm always try to be polite. I try to be courteous. I hold the door for women. Chivalry is not dead. I, I do these things so that they can see that a normal human being can operate in society with a firearm and know that there is some version of safety and security right next to them, that there is a fellow citizen willing to do and go that extra length for their security and for their fellow citizens' security. People have lost complete love for what made up America. You have We've gone to this multiculturalism bullcrap. The idea about coming to America was to be an American, to embrace the American idea to embrace the American dream, and it isn't about being rich, okay? The American dream was so that you could be free. You were your own sovereign. You could create your own kingdom through the purchase of property. That is the American dream. This whole crap about rags to riches and, and, and the smelting pot bull crap. I'm an Afro-American, I'm an Irish-American. It's horse crap. When you come to this country, you left that behind. And one of the first things... They said, you know, in immigration, in, <laughs> this was funny, in 1849, the third question under immigration was, I think it was two, I know it was two parts, but it could have been three. The first part was, do you have firearms experience and are you ready to bear arms as a citizen? That was a question when you came to this country. The second question was, which caliber do you think would be a preferable caliber for you? to support your community. Those were immigration questions. And we have <laughs> fallen so far. We have lost so much of what the real American dream was and what the real idea, like Thomas Jefferson said, a man in a free society and every citizen within that free society must be a soldier. We've come a long, long way from that, Eric. A long way. In fact, you know, I, I referenced uh, Lautenberg, but I, I took my own advice and uh, went ahead and uh, Googled uh, gun control, and the it, it's it's just completely covering. You know, it, it's every aspect is being covered. All of it is, uh, you know, one purpose to generate uh, uh, to generate a division, a wedge uh, in this country, and no longer do we have to worry about following the the will of Congress. No longer, we'll just attach this thing, or we'll go behind closed doors, or maybe we'll go to the UN. With only a little bit of time left, give us a recap uh, of what happened with the UN small arms uh, treaty ban, and uh, and how that is not dead. Well, you know, they, they, they basically, the main, the, a huge surge, you had four different groups that came out against it, all four groups were basically screaming. They bombarded the White House. They bombarded Congress, telling them that, you know, if, if they signed this issue, it would be an act of war on the population of America, according to the Constitution. And then the mainstream media twisted it and said that, that it, it died, that, that we won this big victory for the right to bear arms. And actually, it's only been postponed for review Till, till uh, from my numbers, till just after the election. We're yeah. talking December 13th, going into the Christmas session and so forth. Uh, December 13th, the small arms treaty is going to come back around 
for whomever this new president is, whichever one it may be, that, that to to review again. Th this documentation has not died. Then they also, the proprietors, Hillary Clinton, got with this other idiot and helped attach it to the cyberspace legislation. Well, I guess that's the end of the show. Yeah, and that's not that's what we're referring to. This attach it to the cybersecurity bill, uh, which in and of itself, I mean, it, it's all hitting us at once. Right? We're going to have complete control over the, the free flow of information, the free exchange of ideas and information. Uh, and I'll just do uh, uh, an insult to injury. We'll go ahead and throw some gun control in there. Eric Lovely, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for co-hosting with me. If you want to hear Eric again, he'll be back here Thursday, 5 p.m. West, 8 p.m. East. Guys, uh, hang tight. We got uh, Michael Snyder of the Economic Collapse blog as well as the AmericanDream.com. He'll be joining us here in about 10 minutes. Hang tight. We'll see you soon.